right? Nick is doing B-roll over there. <laughs> so, it's uh, Daily Hearn's number 13. Number 13? Yes. Yeah. Is that is that a bad number? No, it's good. It's good? Yeah, so yeah, it's going to yeah. be a good vlog? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Today we're going to um, talk about model kits a little bit with BJ, he's getting ready right now. Then we're going to talk about uh, some... I forgot. Was it high <laughs> Number 13. <laughs> Might be unlucky after all. <laughs> right, so what is it? I know you mentioned it in a previous small Instagram post that we did. Yes. Um, but can you remi remind us what you're doing? Sure. This is a scene that's um, come from the animation by Studio Ghibli of uh, My Neighbor Totoro. So this is the bus scene, where they're waiting for the cat bus to come along. And so this is going to be the Totoro, and this is Satsuki. And then she's actually with her smaller sister, and the small sister is actually going to become this little bear that's hanging off her bag. So that's going to be May. These are pretty much straight out of the animation. I'm going to use one of these 3D printed cats as a cat bus, so it'll be printed in the same orange colours. The street Lancer, we've got a very tiny LED inside, and I've hooked it up to a uh, flicker circuit. So you might not notice it now, but it's going to have this soft sort of glow to it, which gives it that sort of country, sort of worn look. So the Totoro here is actually started off as a uh, uh, Mika Wii Go Tro, is it? I think they're called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, we just enhanced the front of it to look more like the Totoro. So it's got the Totoro markings across the chest. Um, I've started working on the ears here, which is a Millie Putt. Uh, it's got the leaf on the top there, which is a, a resin cast real leaf. And there's a little tiny leaf here, which he's using to try to shade uh, Satsuki. But you know, it's at a point where, you know, there's so much rain, she's going to be all wet. Eventually she's going to be holding a book above, above her head to cover herself. And on the front of the book is going to be an actual picture from the animation. So you sort of get a, an idea of how it all ties together. Cool. So you're doing this for Model Expo 2019? That's correct. Yes. Happening in Melbourne soon? Yes. It's only three weeks away now. So it's really counting down. Roughly how long do you think you still have on this one? Oh, I'm going to use all the time I can. <laughs> so every day, it's it's an hour to two. But coming to the last week, it's probably going to be the whole evenings, I think. In the meantime, can people still enter the competition? Oh, uh... absolutely. So you can enter on the day too. So you just um, turn up on the Friday night, I think. So I think they're open until nine in the evening for people that work on Saturday, obviously. And then on the Saturday, I think you have until midday. And uh, if they need help, they yes. can come here. Absolutely. Or, you know, pop in any time and more than happy to help. All right. Well, thanks for this. And uh, we're looking forward to see you a little bit more in the next episode. No worries. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Are you trying to steal that ink smack or what? <laughs> um, I think it's so bright. I don't think I'll get far. <laughs> it's really cool. Do you have two seconds for a pick of the day? Yeah. Okay, welcome to today's Daily Pick. Uh, today we have received the big X Max in orange. You've got ready to run cars in here. So, what we're going to do is just do a video to say, hey, you know, if you want to come down and have a go. Yeah, just do it. Cool. Ready to go. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> now we can. I was, was going to do a bit more formal. Now let's do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know she was recording. <laughs> I'm this, is how, this is how sneaky she is. She does the work. Turn around, there's a camera on my face. <laughs> so, if you want to come racing, the guys here can sort you out. That's basically what we're trying to say. Right, so. Okay. These are the cars. So we're going to introduce you to the club cars, which is, is it free for your first time to come and race? Usually free for the first time. If uh, We'll give you a car to suit how much you've driven. So if you haven't driven before, we'll give you a plastic tub car, just an old TT01. And other than that, uh, we have a, a couple of older VBCs. They've got a 785 set up for GT, and they will get a 215 set up for uh, the lower grade. Mine is the name of the club? Uh, Baronia Radio Control Car Club. 7 o'clock racing starts um, every Wednesday night under lights. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. No worries. Thanks. Right, 
so now what's right. the plan? What so I'm going to gonna show you a few yeah. tips if you are interested, some of the key features on a RC car. So yeah. first of all, we actually run on a slick tyre, so you can see there's no tread on the tyres here. This is the preferred tyre, they come in different compounds, so obviously this is going to be a soft one, you can feel how tacky it is. We actually put a, what's called an additive onto the tyre, and then we bake it in with what's called a tyre warming cup. That actually warms up your tyres, you can set it up to 100 degrees if you want to. Tonight we're around 60 to 70 degrees, so you get a nice bit of heat in the tyres. That's one key feature. Another one is with your motor, so all these have got different motors. Um, this one here is a 70 and a half, so what you have here, these are the gears, which you actually can change the ratio to get the best performance out of the motor. So each car, each motor will have a different ratio, some classes will have a set ratio you have to abide by. But for this one, it's a slower motor, so what you try and do is achieve the top speed, is get actually a large pinion to suit the spur. But you don't want to go too big because the bigger the pinion, the more strain the motor's under. When the motor's under strain, it gets hot and then sometimes can fade. So you want to try and get the ratio right, keeping the motor cool. Um, you've probably seen a few, I don't think any of these cars, but you can actually fit a fan uh, at the back of the motor which can help keep the cooling down too. Um, another little tip, wiring is quite crucial. In uh, camera uh, holding duty, is that high enough for you? <laughs> yes, I think you, you can point it down a little bit. Yes. Cool. Cool. Is it heavy? No. <laughs> Alright, well thanks for introducing um, everyone to like what the basics is. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's good to uh, you know just show you what actually goes on in racing because some of you might know RC cars are out there but you know we actually meet up on Wednesday nights here especially uh, to race these things and it's great because there's a lot of people we have food here as well to snack on it's um, it's pretty good yeah it's pretty good so yeah. if you guys are interested feel free to ask questions for Rob in the comments just uh, a, little, a little thumbs up on the video yeah. and stay tuned for more RC uh, related content yeah thanks guys Oh, who's there? How are you? It's the frame guy. It's the frame guy. That's my department. That's, yeah. not, that's not yours. Yeah. The department is messy. Hey everyone, so today we are talking about the TBS Tiny Whoop uh, ready to fly. If you want to check the Binet Flight version, we already talked about it in a previous vlog. We'll do a, di a different video soon. But today that's the ready to fly version. Yep, yeah, so we're going to show you today how easy it is to get it up in the air. So this uh, ready to fly version comes with goggles and controller, and we're going to show you that all now. Alright, so starting off with the box. This is basically the Bionet Fly. If you're going to buy it in Bionet Fly, this is what you get. So you get the quad in here. Then you'll get a spare set of props, which are as handy, charger, and one battery. So, installing a battery nice and easy, just coming from the back here. Carefully slide in. So, we're going to now switch on the controller, a little switch down the bottom here. This will light up, make sure the throttle's down. Then we're going to plug in the battery. So, so we go to a flashing mode. Transmitter, we obviously have the arm button that's going to start the motors. Mode, this is going to choose your horizon, which is a stable mode. Um, and then you've got acro, which is no assistance by the, the gyro inside. So it's all down to you as a pilot to actually control for the air. But today we're going to keep it in horizon. Uh, here we have recover. This is what's called, uh, some people know as a turtle mode. So if it is inverted, you can actually, uh, it reverses the props to actually push air that way to actually flip it back over. It's a very handy feature for a small quad. And then VATX channel is just switching channels. So if you have multiple quads in the air, you can actually choose your one channel and challenge your mates to have a race with them. So now we're gonna switch on the goggles. This is the goggles come in the, the Red Fly kit. Not a bad thing for the value. Um, it's got a battery included, so you just need to charge it via USB. Um, I have to put it on charge for a bit so we get something. And there inside we have the screen, uh, we can see. So now we just need to scan for the channel just by pressing the button down the side here, and there we are. Okay, now adjustable head straps, so it fits majority of heads. <laughs> nice comfy fit. Don't right. forget the aerial, right? And yeah, don't forget this little thing here, so we can go the distance around the whole shop. So, take this off for a minute, so I can see where um, my controller is. So I'm gonna put the controllers up, and the goggles on. Um, pretty good image through these, so not bad for the valley. Arm it, so the props are ready, and we're gonna take it for a quick test fly. land and then hit the arm button to switch off the motors. Yes, so we did a flight with uh, Ben in the other vlog. If people want to see how it looks like when it flies, they can check that. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, but uh, ma mainly, uh, you flew it a little bit earlier already. Yeah, um, well, as for setting up, there's no binding involved. It's literally switch on the controller, switch on the quad, 
finds it. Goggles, you just need to search for the channel, and it's uh, super easy and to use. And to get into FPV, it's perfect because if you know it flies, it, you, you know you're getting used to that to the vision through the goggles. Yeah. Um, for the money, it's uh, it's great. Yeah. Okay, cool. As a conclusion, uh, we're going to do a follow-up on the Bind and Fly version, like how to set up your flight controller, how to bind it to your controller. We organize races now and again for these uh, smaller quads, so uh, check it out on our Facebook page. We'll be announcing it very soon. Um, and yeah, spectators welcome. And if you've got any micro drone, you're more welcome to come down and uh, see uh, the track, my next track and the design, and see if I can challenge you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we see you soon. Bye-bye. Hi. <laughs> Could you tell? Are you filming? <laughs> How's your Friday going? Here? Good. Good? Yeah. Any any action going on here? Um, repairs. Yes. You know that people, uh, since they saw you explaining stuff about trains, they want to see more train topic? We can do that. So we'll do that? We can do more trains. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> good news. Cool. <laughs> Have a good one. It's time. It's time. <laughs> you knew it would come. Okay. It's time for the conclusion, again. Conclusion. You're here for the conclusion of the vlog. Okay. And since you're doing the uh, Game of Thrones model kit, mm -hmm. and next week is the final episode of Game of Thrones. Yes. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, I think everyone's going to die and they're going to um, go to a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Australian context related right there? Uh, well, yeah, it could be topical, yes. Um, I have no idea. You have no I guess, idea. I guess we'll wait and see on Monday. I can't yeah. wait. How's your uh, model kit going? Yes, good. It's about finished with the sculpting on my on my tree. Um, yeah. So I've got to do a bit of the um, uh, surfacing on the, on the ground. A few other things and then I can finally start on the foliage, the leaves. Oh my so, god, the thousand leaves. Uh, yeah, yeah, so um, that's when it gets really uh, insane, so yeah. Okay, do you think we can have a, a glimpse at it next episode? Yeah. Cool. I'll, uh, I'll bring in a video next time and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, see some progress then. All right. Oh, you suck. Oh dear. <laughs> I shot the conclusion with Nathan, but then I thought we should have... I need to be part of yes, the conclusion. Yes, we should be part of it, maybe with Rob. How's your Friday going, guys? Great, really good. Cold really today. Good. For it's some cold. I'm yeah. in a t shirt. Someone is still in summer. <laughs> and you're in and winter. And I'm in winter. Yeah. Episode 13 is finished. Is I just give you now. 12B? 12B. You don't like the 13. No, it's not 13. 13, unlucky 13. He's unlucky the 13. It's just 12B. <laughs> All right, what do we say? Subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe comment join, if you want to see some yet, stuff. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye. -bye. See you. Thank you. So what have you been doing? You've been using a hammer? Just trying to get it out, yeah. Because it wedged itself in there. Oh my god. So I think the hole in this top plate, in this mm -hmm. bottom half, is a bit too tight for yeah. this sleeve. And then I'll run a shim on the top. Yeah. Just to give me that fraction bit of clearance. Yeah. And then we should be good. Alright. That's the fun bit of new heli. <laughs> good luck.